Hey everybody, I'm Ted from Tabex. In this video, I want to go over Rust Admin. I'm using the free version, so you should be able to just download this, run it on your own computer and follow along. Rust Admin is the go-to program to keep an eye out and control your server while you're away or even when you're at the computer where you're hosting it from. If you're not interested in everything or if you already have a little bit of an understanding of Rust Admin, you can look in the video description or in the time bar, there will be chapters. So if you only want to watch a certain topic, you can have a look over there. Down in the description, I will also link to our Rust playlist. So if you want to learn more on how to work with your Rust server or work with Tabex in combination with your Rust server, also take a look in the video description. If you thought this was helpful in any way, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. That's the easiest way for you to help us in return for helping you. In my case, I'm using GTX Gaming. I'm gonna go to Server Details, select Archon, and then click on execute. Let's copy over everything. It didn't give us a server port, but if we go back to our server, you can see that our game port is 28018. So let's also copy that, paste that as a server port. I like to check auto reconnect. That way we're connected as soon as possible and we can read all the messages coming up in the console while it's booting up to see if everything is working as intended. If you only have one server, you might want to do auto connect on startup. I hop back and forth between different servers, so I usually leave this off. It should automatically select Web Archon here at the top. If it doesn't, make sure you select Web Archon here. But you will see that if we go to server and connect that it will not work. At the bottom, it will keep saying disconnected and it, it will not work even though all the information is fine. This is something that confuses a lot of people. You have to actually save the profile first. So here where it says new configuration, I can click on save, I can do tutorial, tabex, okay. And then it says configuration saved. And even now without changing anything, if I now go to server and click on connect, you will see that it works right away. So if you were having issues connecting to your server, I hope by saving the profile, at least I fixed that issue for you. Now let's dive into Rust admin and let's actually see what we can do with it. So I'm gonna start all the way at the left at the console. We can see everything that's happening on the back end of the server. So if I say anything in the chat here, hello, Let's say you want to try to read a conversation between people, see what is going on. You can also just go to the chat and here you just got the chat without all the other console stuff going on around it. If you want to execute a comment, you could do that down here. Let's say for example, env.time0, you can see that it will become nighttime here in a second. Or if you want to type a message, this will display as the server, as you can see. We also got some options on the right. We can do scheduled comments. If we click on new comment, you can say what kind of schedule would you like? So every day, only once or periodic. Let's say once, let's set it to two minutes and then let's do env.time10. Let's make it day. Create comment, comment created. And now let's wait and see if it automatically runs in a second and makes it or minute <laughs> and makes it day. 12, 16 in the bottom left, exactly as how we set it. So this is a weird example, something that makes a little bit more sense. You can use player count. So for example, you could periodically display how many people are online. Let's continue to triggered comments. When we click on new comment, you can say what kind of event do we want to happen? So let's say when chat text, I don't want to exclude it to a specific player. So let's leave this empty. It says execute only if the chat text is hello world. Let's do env.time00 again. Let's copy this so we can just paste it in game. Let's do create comment and let's say that in chat. As you can see, it works perfectly. If you click on display help, there's also a few beacons you can use and some examples. So go here if you need a little bit more information. Let's go to the highlight system. Let's click on add and let's say whenever the lines contains, let's say pomus, I want a Android green. That sounds good. I can even play a sound. Ooh, can I hear the sound? Okay, I cannot hear the sound, so this is going to be interesting. Don't apply Oxide. I don't really use the Oxide tab, to be honest. I didn't even show it, I realize. <laughs> so leave that off because everything from Oxide is already in the console. And then let's create filter. And as you can see now, it already adds it anytime my name. So if I say something in chat, for example, it plays a sound now, which is really annoying. <laughs> you can also see that it changed the color inside of the log over here. So let's definitely turn that off because that beep was the worst. Then lastly for this page, the filters. When I save the game, you can see it says here, saving complete. So let's copy this. Let's go new filter and let's, for example, just put this here, set it to hide, create filter. You see that it's already removed them. But if I now save the game again, you will see that we get the other two messages, but it doesn't say saving complete anymore. 
there's a little bit of customization you can do there. Top right, we got the server configuration. You can change the server time. We can run comments to reset the animals, the resources, and the collectibles. There's also a few settings for the weather we can mess with, and also the performance. You can disable the animals to move and disable their AI in general. The gameplay is a little bit less interesting that way, but it does really help if you have performance issues. If you change anything here, don't forget to run the comment server.writecfg. That will make sure that all the settings you clicked here or changed here are actually saved to the config file. So then if you restart the server, it will remember those settings and actually use those next time you start up the server. And then we got one more tab hidden here on the right. It's the server info. So here I can see the host name, the URL, the description and the picture. I can change those and then hit apply if I want to change those images. And also I got a little bit of detailed information down here, like how many frames per second my server is running at, which is pretty nice to know. It doesn't have a button here, but I would recommend, let's say you change the image while it's already running, go to the server config and click this button. So that way the new changes are actually saved. And then quickly here on the bottom right, we got some quick comments. If you have something you use a lot, so let's say, let's just stick to the theme, right? <laughs> ENV that time, you can add it to the list. You can right click on it and run. And that way it will quickly run that on the server. Then let's go to the players tab. Here you can see everybody that is connected to your server and everybody that has been connected to your server. And there's also a refresh button in the bottom left if you need it for some reason, but it will update automatically. There's a lot of information you get to see from the player. When you right click a person, you get more options for that person. You can go to their Steam profile or copy it, copy the nickname, IP address. You can also set markers. One you might use a little bit more, depending on what kind of server you're running, of course, is the teleport. Let's say a buddy of mine is online. I can just click on his name and I will be teleported to him. And if you go to actions, you can select the item. Let's say I want to give myself some ammo. Select here how many I want to give myself. Click add. It will be added to the list. And then I can give everything in that list to myself or to everybody. You can also save those lists. So for example, I have a build list with a lot of resources and electricity components. So I can just click there, give to Ted Pomus. Now I get all those items. If you're someone like me who likes to mess around building bases, this is really a lifesaver. So let's go to the band page. If you need to ban someone, you can do that here on the right by filling in their Steam ID. Of course, you can go to the players list, right click, copy Steam ID, fill it in here, click ban. If you have a very long ban list, you can also use filters. And if you want to ban a IP, you can go to the bottom right. It says new band IP, fill in the IP address. And you can also click that if a player joins using this IP address, you can just ban the associated Steam account. Here you got some PVP stats. I don't have any PVP on my server because this is a testing server. So I don't have any stats here, but anything that happened PVP wise while you, your Rust admin is connected will be shown here. You can also send the kill events to the game chat if you want to. So you can enable that here. I also got more help over here. Since I only just connected to the server, there is not a lot of statistics to show here. For this Rust admin statistics to actually build up a graph, you will need to have your computer running and Rust admin connected to your server so it can constantly update the graph. If you keep it connected, there will be a graph shown, which will show you the player count and the connection state so you will exactly know what has been going on player-wise and connection-wise. Let's click over to the powered users. This tab can be used to configure powered players or moderators, and it shows you exactly how you can do it with examples, etc. You can give people you trust the permission to, for example, ban, kick, and mute people by filling in their Steam ID and username. Of course, be really careful with who you give permission to do anything on your server. And then lastly, we've got a few more options on the configuration. We've got some anti-cheat options. It says here, you need to disconnect first. So let's disconnect, go to server and then disconnect. So I'm not gonna go over all the options. There are a few interesting ones, but I, the one that I really find interesting is anti-unauthorized admins. So if I click on enable, if somehow people figure out a way to get admin on your server, if you have Rust admin connected to your server, it will automatically detect that and ban that Steam ID. So the second they get access, basically they get banned from the server and there's nothing they can do. There are some anti-chat abuse options. You even got an advanced option over here. So once again, I'm not gonna go over all the options. Otherwise the video will be way too long. Also, it's pretty self-explanatory. So you should be able to figure this one out. If there's anything you would like me to cover, either more about Rust Admin or a certain topic that you're having issues with, please leave a comment down below. If you guys see a comment that you like and you think, yes, I would like to know that as well, you can always like that comment so it goes to the top and we can see it. I hope this was helpful. 
You can join our Discord to hang out with other content creators and learn how to grow your online community. All our social links will be in the video description. Thank you for watching and good luck with your Tabex store.